the show. This is time for our Woman Wednesday. It's a very colorful set here in Hello Nigeria, as you're about to find out. Now, we have with us someone who is a retail entrepreneur, a Bini culture devotee. She's going to explain to that, and I'll probably put her on the spot, asking her to speak some things. She is also an impertinent foodie and the founder of the Mose store. Please, put your hands together. As we introduce, No Way is Sibo. Hi, No Way. Great to have you here. Hi, Ayo. Hi, Oli. First of all, I must say you here. look really beautiful. Oh, well, thank you. I like your outfit. Did you make it? Okay, so this was um, from a shoot we had promoting the store launch by Jane Michael. And um, everything else, I just put it together. Lovely. Thank you. Oh, is your scarf a sign your signature look? Um, will I say I love scarves. I love turbans. I love tying my hair. I just feel like it gives you that um, quintessential African woman look, right? I'm not saying that I don't love my weaves. I love, love my wigs and my weaves and everything. But I think scarf, scarves just give you like a different, um, very beautiful feel. Yeah. Okay, so today on the show, we've been talking a lot about beauty standards from the beginning of the show okay. up until now. Before we come to talk about talk to you about yourself and your brand, okay. I think it's time to ask you what you think of beauty standards. Now, we were talking earlier about how social media has defined what beauty should be. A woman should have thin waist, hourglass body. What yeah. would you say has been your beauty standard? So for me, I, I know that for every woman they have some sort of struggle, you know, because social media has put um, a certain perception of what beauty should be. But the question is, who put the standard of beauty? Like, mm -hmm. who is the who in question, right? The magazines, you know, runway shows, the designers who choose to use thick skin, uh, skinny models. But at the end of the day, God made us all differently. We're all Mose in every day. I have to put that in there, you know. So we're all Mose in every way. What's Mose? What does Mose mean? Mose means beauty in Benin. Because you did say you're going to put me on the spot for Benin culture. Yes, devotee. I am going to put you on the spot. So I feel like for me, my standard of beauty is accepting who you are. No matter how you feel like you're not the same as the next person, you have to know that you're uniquely made to be just you. And there's no other person quite like you on this earth. Wonderful. Even if you're a Now, twin. you speak like someone who is passionate about en enabling people to know their worth yes. and to appreciate themselves. Yes. Was there any time in your life where you doubted yourself, whether your physical looks, mm -hmm. your ability, or just being a woman, your body, were you uncomfortable at any, about, any, about it at any time? Because we find that in recent times, a lot of women are uncomfortable with what they see in the mirror. Yeah, they look at themselves in the mirror and they just hate it. Did you, because you, I mean, from what you just said, you sounded really passionate yeah. about you knowing yourself that God created you as an individual mm -hmm. and uniquely you. Did you ever have any personal hang -ups? It's never, it's never, it's never been this easy to accept myself. Um, but the honest truth is I've always been, I guess it's always been it's the personality trait. I've always been very confident for every stage of my life, right? I was a tomboy. That's hard to believe. Oh, trust me, <laughs> as a lot of my friends. I was a tomboy playing with my guy boyfriends in school. When I mean boyfriends, I mean friends that are boys. So, you know, get your mind <laughs> out of the gutter. You know, playing football with them in school, basketball and everything. I used to wear my brother's canvas. I used to wear baggy, baggy t-shirts, baggy jeans and everything. And I remember um, first year of my university, um, University of Port Harcourt, I had this huge baggy trousers, like with, I don't know, it was pink and blue. I had two of those actually. And I had like a basketball sleeveless shirt. And I remember people laughing at me, passing the boys' hostel. And I, because I was working with my friend Chibuma, and I remember them laughing at me, like, ah, lag baja, nawa for you, wait till you they wear, la ba la ba, you know how boys' hostel yeah. can be. But even at that, I was still very confident in who I, who, I, who I was and who I am and who I will be. But that is not to say that it has it's been easy. I have moments where I feel like I'm too fat, I'm too thin, or I'm not enough, right? But at the end of the day, I have a very good support system. Mm -hmm. I have to say that. I have a very good support system. For every stage, stupid mistakes that I've made, even they supported me. And they always feel like, no way, you're everything. You should be everything that God says you are. And we believe you. We'll call you out when you step out. But then we'll call you out for you to step back in, into the glory of what God wants you to be. So, yes, it's been a struggle. But then the people you have around you, 
it's very important to boost that confidence. I like that you mentioned that because there are many women who are out there thinking, you know, it's just me. So it's important out there that if at any point in your life yeah. you ever doubted yourself or if you are doubting yourself as you watch this, you're not the only one. I'm pretty sure that at, at a point in our lives we've all doubted ourselves in one area or the other on this set. But having um, a fantastic support system, which is why yes. it's important for people to be careful how they talk to others mm -hmm. because you can either break them down or build them up with your words. Absolutely. Let's go a little into your background. Who is Noe? Ooh, who is Noe K or K O E B Alexis Clementine Isibo? Wow. Yes. I those love your names. Those are by my the names. Way. Very I lovely. love the Bini name. Oh, thank it's very you. Very beautiful. I embrace my culture. I think we're one of the richest. And back to your question, Uli, who is Noe Isibo? That's why I pronounce my full name. I am a firm believer that, you know, the name that you're given is important to. No, determine who you are, maybe not, because some people are called paper or flower, you know, perhaps, but I guess my great-grandmother, who gave me my name, no woke or be. So that means, in my culture, everything that God thinks that I need is in my body. So I am completeness. Mm. You see what I, I mean? I love that name. Yes, I am completeness. I am a complete being, even though sometimes as a you know, human being, you doubt yourself and you don't think or you don't feel like you're good enough, right? But at the end of the day, you have to push, you have to be resilient, you have to be unapologetically woman in who you are. So I feel like that question you asked, Noah is an unapologetic, quintessential African woman who wants to just inspire and um, please God. And I like the fact that you're saying you're unapologetically yes. African, as yes. you can see from your outfit. Oh, yes. <laughs> Even though from the beads on your hands. Yes, the beads on your hands. And the fact oh, that yes. there are lots of people that uh, that go on, you know, they, they don't like their traditional This names. is called Ivie. Ivie. Yes. So Ivie in my language means precious. Precious beads. Coral beads. Pure coral beads, actually. Mm. And, okay, um, there's, there's a fake one, actually. So this is actually the original one. Yes, there's a <laughs> fake one. But anyways, this is, this, if you know your coral beads, you can touch it. This is, this is for real, yeah. right? So they're called precious coral beads. And there was a time where it was actually used for money to, like, to buy goods. Instead of using money, you can use coral beads, right? So this in my culture means precious. It's called Ivie. So if you know a friend that's called Ivie in Benin, yeah. her name means precious, and she's a precious one. Wonderful. Okay, so as I was saying before, I like your African look, your African yes. feel, and the fact that you're very in touch with your tradition. We're in a generation where we hear ladies say, no, I don't understand my language, but you're very bold and vocal about it. Mm -hmm. What would you say influenced this? How was, would you say it was your family, or you just, because there are people who are on their own. I learned the little about Igbo that I know, I learned mm -hmm. on my own. I wouldn't say my mom or my father helped me in any way. They absolutely did not, you know. Yeah. So would you say that your parents were a great influence into who you've become, the mm -hmm. Bini culture devotee that you've become? Or yes. was it something that you just decided to be along the way? Clearly, <laughs> not something I decided to be along the way. So my mom, Nekme Nekme Aisiruwa, she's a Benin woman. My late dad, God rest his soul, FAG, is a Benin man. And growing up, I grew up in Benin, primary, secondary. I think I just became rebellious and I'm like, I need to leave Benin. So I went to Port Harcourt. But I grew up in Benin and I grew up in my family house, right? So my grandmother, my aunties, they were all speaking Benin to me. But you know the funny thing? I, Benin is such a, it's, I'm not going to say difficult language. I'm going to say challenging because we have a lot of consonants. We have G, we have... K, we have W, we have, you know, so it's very big, big, he, he, you know, it's difficult to get your tongue around it, right? So I'm not going to say that I'm completely um, fluent in the Benin language, but I can understand everything that you say to me in Benin and I can communicate. Maybe perhaps I may just impute one or two English, English words. words there. But um, to answer your question, I definitely did not become like this, right? It's the influence around me. Benin culture, if you read it, was so colorful, was so beautiful. And the Benin, um, the Oba of Benin, um, um, the Oba of Benin that just got coronated, he attracted every personality from every walks of, walk of life. So that is just to show how revered and beautiful our culture is, right? So um, 
being around and staying in Benin and being with my family, my mom, my late dad, my cousins, my brother who speaks very well, and my sister, everybody, definitely influenced my um, Benin culture um, love. And my uncle, I'm going to add that, my uncle Kenneth Elweka, he's from the royal family, and he's one person that also tries to let us not to forget our culture. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, you've, you're a young girl who left um, Benin, and um, after that, you have come to become an entrepreneur, a fashion entrepreneur in Lagos. Tell us about that journey. Fashion. So you moved away from Benin, went to Port Harcourt. Yeah. Obviously, you didn't stop there. You moved further away to Lagos, and now you're about to conquer the fashion industry in Lagos. Fashion? Okay. Um, well, fashion and beauty. beauty. Fashion and beauty. Okay, so it's in the, it's in the box. Um, I don't... Okay, so the thing is, from Benin, like you said, I went to Port Harcourt. Not, I love University of Benin. It's a very good school. Um, but I've always had this rebellious streak and um, curious streak in me. So I went to Our Lady of Apostles, and I went to University of Benin Demonstration Secondary School, which is UDSS, right? And Uniben is right. UDSS and Uniben are in the same space, right? So I felt like i done six years in my secondary school. I don't really want to do four or five more years in University of Benin as much as it's a great school. I don't really want that. I want a different environment. And to be honest, I remember my mom and my dad fighting me, like, what is wrong with you? And left my mom, my school should be here, her husband's office should be there. Mm -hmm. my, like, <laughs> she, she obviously mothers, she wants all of us, she wanted all of us around. Um, but then I told my dad, I said, Daddy, you didn't go to Unibeno, you went to University of Ife. <laughs> do you understand? So why do I have to be the person to stay in Benin when you were allowed to go to go to, to Ife? Like, so why, why do I have to be that? So you know how your mom has some sort of hold on your dad? So it took a while for um, him to convince her to let me go, of which I had already bought my pre-degree form <laughs> through one of my friends, Isoke or Chibuma. I can't remember which one now, just to go there. And um, I feel like coming to Lagos was chance. It was in, um, after University of Port Harcourt, I was posted here for NYC. And after NYC, I, you know, got retained at my place of work. And um, at that point in my life, I also decided to go for the Miss Nigeria competition, where I emerged second runner up. And yes, I guess, you know, there's a lot of things in my life that would probably don't even have time for that, that have helped me become um, sort of like a beauty, I think that's what you were asking, yeah. the beauty and fashion. I don't necessarily see myself as a fashion when star, I look to be you, honest. I just see fashion. But Actually, yes, okay. <laughs> Maybe, well, yes. yeah, but Maybe so it's something more, I'm prophesying, something you need to look into. I think so, because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a businesswoman entrepreneur, yes. so I don't like to box myself. Yes. I've done a lot of hustling in my life. I've, yeah. I've sold sand, I've sold diesel. You see, so this is, an, this is a part of my life that's really exciting, yeah. the Mose um, experience. But knowing me, I want to conquer that and make it bigger. So there's nothing, nothing can say that I can't. There's beauty retail, there's probably fashion retail, yeah. and um, house retail, food retail. I'm not boxing myself. So oh, I'm yes. an entrepreneur, a businesswoman. Good. And um, if, I, if I'm looking fashionable while at it, then hey. Fantastic. It's not possible for us to yeah. let you go without you telling us quickly about okay. the Mose store and what you have planned. Ooh, the Mose store, I'm so excited about this project. It's been a two and a half year project. Um, the Mose store is a beauty retail store with a passion and a purpose. We want to push women to obviously love themselves, but at the end of the day or at the same time, we want to make sure that women have access to affordable and accessible beauty skincare products. And we also want to make sure that lots of African entrepreneurs are given a chance to have a beauty full quality retail space to display their goods because what I find is that there's a lot of beauty retail spaces out there that are not quite beautiful which is really ironic so I'm here mm -hmm. to revolutionize the beauty retail space in Africa and we're starting with our first uh, with our flagship store on Saturday the third um, third of June our first flagship store is going to be launched and there's, there's a lot of beauty products. Even right now, I'm using the Klima brand. 
is, a, is an Igbo brand by uh, a woman who is just plainly organic and lipstick looks fabulous, don't you think? Very fabulous. <laughs> very, very fabulous. <laughs> yeah. So, so let's look at the, the retail store is popping up on Saturday. Yes, Do you please. have an event to support? Any events coming up? Like, is there going to be like a grand party? What are you doing? Is it open I to mean, everyone? This is not a pop up, by the way, it is an actual beauty retail hub. So we're there, we're permanently there. People, we're people can there. pop up at the Mose store, actually, yeah. but we are there permanently, and we hope to build more retail spaces. So the Mose store is located in Lekki Phase 1 Admiral 2A. And to answer your question, is it, is it an event? It's a full-on fledged event. So it's, it's themed Mose Wonderland, an African tea party. Ooh. Ooh. I like the sound of I that. I know. So, the, the, so that means we're, we're to dress in an African. Printastically, fantastically, and characteristic. There's a word like that. <laughs> I love that. I'm really, really excited that you're a young, beautiful woman Thank and you're you. passionate about promoting the African culture. Exactly. I think that's really exemplary. Thank you. Oh, so I much. really like this picture. Oh, yeah. So that's the, um, uh, the promo shoot we did to promote the um, launch, which is coming yeah. on 3rd of June. And because I said it's an African tea party, we decided to do that. To do that. So you're going to come, you're going to see maybe some, uh, you know, Cocktails, some tea infused cocktails, maybe, you know, yeah. if you want hot tea, we can get that for you as well. Yeah. But you're going to come and make sure you come in all your printastic well, outfits. Why is that a bit oxymoron? Is that oxymoronic in terms of the fact that you're doing an African tea, tea party? party? Oh, well. I think it's maybe because she's bringing international brands as I well. I mean, the thing is, I love my international brands. Don't get me wrong. I think they're doing great. But I also think that African brands are doing great as well. So I want to promote that. I want people to know that African brands are... Because right now, I'm not even going to go into details, but a lot of things that I use on my skin right now are African and Nigerian brands. Good. Okay. So, yes, you know, I, I want people to know that you can get African brands and international brands at the Mose store. And when we're doing that, putting African brands alongside international brands, we're going to tell people that, you know how people see this and say, oh, it's, it's African or it's Nigerian, AKA it's lesser quality. Mm. No, when you see a product next to an international brand, you probably may, may not be able to know the difference yes. because the quality is that great. Yes. yes, we have a long way to go, but trust me, there are a lot of brands that are doing well. So come through and be happy. It's open to everybody, right? It's open to everybody. Every beauty enthusiast, every beauty entrepreneur, every beauty buff. And we have a fashion element, fashionable element, because of the theme. Yeah. So I'm sure um, people who are fashionistas as well get to come in and um, sure they will have fun. Fantastic. Fantastic. And you guys are all coming, right? Yes, yes hopefully. hopefully. We will. No, Although our Saturday is no, very busy, uh, but we'll try to find a way to join. Yeah. I don't like hopefully. That's too vague. She's putting us on the spot. Yes. Anyway, we've had the pleasure of speaking <laughs> with Noe Isibo. She is one woman who is pushing the African narrative, telling it in such a beautiful way, and ensuring that you buy Naira to grow the Naira. So yes. make sure that you all join her. How can they follow you on social media? Oh, so um, the Moses store is the Moses store on Instagram. That's T H E M O S E S T O R E. Yes. On Twitter as well, the, the Moses store. store. On Facebook as well, the Moses store. All right, so be Mosified. <laughs> <laughs> follow the Moses store. Be part of this. Buy Naira to go to Naira. Thank you so much for joining Thank us. Thank you. Last so question. Much. What's the full meaning of Mose? Mose means beauty. Yeah. Okay, but I'm sure it's a full name. So no. The right. thing is that Mose is beauty, so you can use it. You can say, um, okay, so olive no Mose. Okay. Olive no Mose means olive, olive that is, is beautiful. Ayo no Mose. Ayo no Mose. Hello, Nigeria no Mose. Exactly. All right, before we go, we would like to say a very <laughs> happy, happy birthday, birthday to, to Ayo daddy. 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 Happy birthday, Daddy. Happy birthday, Daddy. To enjoy more of this, our Ubonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.